All right, everyone, it's time for the occult video number 358. Mirin Daho, interesting individual, actually Dutch initially, uh, who would pierce his body with swords to no apparent ill effect um, while walking around and holding conversations, and in most cases, when we, and, and by the way, this is a subscriber request. I did ask people for new occult topics. By the way, you can weigh in in the comments, maybe, if you've got anything on your mind for things you want to talk about. Paranormal, strictly occult, magical topics, religious philosophy, things of that nature. Um, here's, here's the thing. In most cases, when we have claims that someone can run themselves through with swords, they can take a battle axe to the head. They can drink po like a Rasputin sort of thing. They can drink poison with no ill effect. Nobody cares. Uh, and they do just fine and then ask for more. Uh, <laughs> disco song <laughs> on that topic, by the way. Um, most of the time, we don't have any photographic or video evidence of any of these things actually occurring. Oftentimes, we also get conflicting reports in historical records about what happened. This happens with religion a lot, you will notice. With Mirandajo, we actually have video evidence of him actually being run through with swords um, again and having no ill effect, no bleeding or anything like that. Now, one theory, and I happen to subscribe to it, is that Mirandajo, who was into mysticism, he did have paranormal experiences, he heard voices, he thought that he was effectively leading some sort of, of sub-movement. He actually was an Esperantist, uh, actually, and at one point wanted to give a lecture on the subject, and I think was rejected <laughs> at that point. The idea of pulling humanity together by scrapping all human languages in favor of just one might have rankled the Christian population at the time, which is what mainline Europeans and Americans were, of course, back then, many, many decades ago, uh, in the context of the Tower of Babel. I think that might literally be the only reason that they rejected the premise. Uh, by the way, Esperanto, actually one of the easiest languages to learn, probably is a good idea for the world to have some means of communication. Sorry, translators, you'd be put out of business. Uh, here's what I think happened, and, and this is one of the going theories. He probably at some point had pierced himself as the result of religious or, or hypnotic ritual. And scar tissue forms at some point. And as long as you pierce yourself in exactly the same place, eventually you're not going to have any bleeding. There's no vascularity there. It's all scar tissue. He had an assistant who was very, very precise with regards to how he was particularly stabbed, typically used the same exact kind of blade, and therefore you've got scar tissue, so the nerve endings are fucked up. The vascularity is fucked up. You're inserting it, if you look carefully at the videos, it looks like it's inserted specifically to avoid any major organ. So it's not perforating the intestine, it's not hitting a kidney, the stomach, etc. As long as it is exactly perfect, and he's standing exactly upright, and you'll notice in his cant, the way he's moving around, there is an artificial looking uprightness to it. That's because he had to make sure the organs were in exactly the right spot, or something could get perforated and he would die. And, of course, there was a mystic uh, understanding that he happened to have with regards to this. There are tales of him effectively going into a trance. Another thing that's mentioned is Sufism. That is the ritual piercing and slicing of the sort of ecstatic, mystic Islam side of Sufism uh, may have played a role. He seems to have been a man of, of the world, uh, more than maybe a, a localist, more, more cosmopolitan in his socio-political and religious and spiritual leanings. If that's the case, it would explain why there was no blood, because there's nothing vascular being pierced. It would explain why there's little pain, manageable levels of pain, so he could walk around with a sword sticking out of his gut. Again, though, take a look at the footage very, very closely. There are multiple videos and pictures of him actually performing. Therefore, we know that the performance actually happened. I can't think of any way in which the video that I've seen can be faked. Uh, it it's, doesn't appear to be a hoax. He actually was being stabbed with swords. If you look carefully, you can tell that he's artificially upright. He's almost leaning backwards slightly when he's doing this. He's holding himself very much upright and taut, straining his muscles, actually, to keep everything in the proper order. And you can see that when he's being pierced, it isn't just, hey, I'm going to shove this sword into you haphazardly. He would die. Uh, his heart would get pierced, his stomach, and he would bleed out or get sepsis. It's very, very precise. Of course, you would see exactly where the hole of entry and, and exit was. <laughs> All you have to do is effectively pierce the body over and over again. 
It would be like putting a needle in a, an ear piercing. You get your ear pierced. Well, the first time, of course, is pain. There's blood, maybe, etc. I don't know how much blood. Never got my ears pierced because I'm not crazy. Uh, not interested in needles. If you were to put a needle in it a second time, it's already been perforated. There's not going to be any blood. Every time you put the earring in, you're effectively doing the same thing. That appears to be what was happening here. It's possible, by the way, that he had some congenital condition. It's possible that his nerve endings, his vascularity were abnormal to begin with. There could be a biological underpinning to it. We do know that he had effectively religious hallucinations, at least he claimed to. In the end, he died because a voice, supposedly, told him to eat a metal pin, and, and this finally fucked him up. It appears to have perforated some organs inside. It's a little bit different than using the exact lineup of existing scar tissue and replicating that same thrust of the sword over and over again. Um, and of course, you could do this in multiple locations. You would need a basic understanding of anatomy, though. Otherwise, again, you pierce the intestine, sepsis. You pierce the stomach, probably sepsis. You pierce the heart, well, yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a problem. Even if the wound is too small for the blood to be squirting out, it'll probably leak into the chest cavity and suffocate you at some point. Um, the lungs, you could deflate a lung, etc., etc. I do not believe in the subscribed theory that it wouldn't have mattered if he had pierced his organs the first time. I think that would, would be bad. Generally speaking, piercing your organs leads to organ failure. I think rather he either got lucky or there was some skill involved with the initial process of creating the first wound, and it went between all of the organs. And that would account effectively for what we see with Mirandajo. It's mystic, uh, actually. It, it falls in line with the occult, the uh, kind of mystic hypnotic rituals that he claimed to be part of, and the mystic underpinnings to the reason why he was practicing this. Yes, very much occult in nature, showing you a little bit of the power of proper understanding. To the average person, it's a miracle, or, or it's something devilish. Oh my god, he put a spell on himself, he can't be killed. The reality is much, much more mundane and secular, but virtually nobody actually understands how it can occur. Almost a form of illusionism, by the way, illusionists fighting against the mediumship movement. Uh, Houdini was part of that. Very interesting, near contemporary. That's about all. Peace out.